What's up gamers, Cryptico here, and welcome back to Lowering the Mark, a show where I analyze the current and former world records of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe time trial runs to see how these records get faster over time. We'll look at elements such as the loadout, racing lines, and mushroom usage to better understand what's bringing these times down. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell to be the first to know when my videos go live. Welcome to the long-awaited premiere of Season 6. I'm so sorry I was away for longer than usual, I just had a lot of things going on and my focus wasn't on this series. But as stated in my roadmap video, I'm here to stay through at least the next two seasons bringing you more consistent uploads. So without any more stalling, let's get into it. For today's episode, I brought it back to everyone's favorite course to vote for online and slowed down the run a little bit. Ribbon Road at 150cc. On April 29th, 2017, the world record for this run was set at 1 minute 50.528 seconds by the German player Alex. Fast forward to the 4th of July, 2021, and the record was brought down to 1 minute 45.781 seconds by the Spanish legend Alberto. That's a whopping 4.7 second improvement between records and a 4.2% faster time. Our former world record holder Alex has broken a total of 15 world records across 3 unique runs and has only amassed a reign of 5 days holding at least one world record. With a somewhat similar resume, our current world record holder Alberto has broken over 600 world records across 56 unique runs and has spent well over 1,250 days holding at least one of his now 36 current world records. That's over one third of the game. At pre-release, the world record was a touch over 151 and players went at each other trying to sub 150. French player Extreme grabbed the first 149 anyone ever saw and kept at it on its way down to 148, but American player Carson beat him to it. From there, Super Effects would grab the next 7 world records and improve on Carson's time by over a full second. After a short 250 day reign, Japanese player Lemon swooped in and dropped 2 tenths of a second off Super FX's time. That began a mostly one-sided battle between the two that ended with Lemon being the first one under 147 and some pretty lengthy reigns by both players. Midway through 2020, a few players challenged Lemon but he stood tall before Alberto showed up and almost single-handedly brought the record down well under 146. In total, the record was broken 81 times by 17 different players. These two loadouts have some key differences but are still decently viable selections for this course. Alex goes with a combo of the heavy me character driving the Mach 8 with the roller wheels and the plane glider. Alberto goes with the heavy meta combo of Roy driving the bitty buggy with the Azure roller wheels and the paper glider. For 150cc, it's definitely important to have a high top speed stat which Alex has by over a point on Alberto. Where Alex falls embarrassingly behind is in the other important stats such as acceleration, handling, and mini turbo. Alberto's edge in those stats make it really tough for Alex to compete with him, but at least he didn't use the slick tires or choose a glider that didn't help him. I kept this course split up by color because why not? Only this time I decided to include the final turn as part of S3 because I thought the explanations would flow better if I covered the last turn as part of the last section. Sections 1 and 2 are still fairly basic, but the third section is where things really get interesting. Alex starts off with a rocket start and bears towards the right before hitting a normal mini turbo around the first turn, followed by a sort of wide super mini turbo as he collects two coins. He'll end this section with the first of two jump boosts heading off the zipper ramp. Alberto also gets the rocket start, but starts drifting a bit earlier so he can grab the super mini turbo around the first turn. After he chains a similar super mini turbo on the second turn, he lines himself up to grab a quick mini turbo before going off the zipper ramp. While that didn't look like that big of a difference, Alberto's longer lasting mini turbos have propelled him ahead as he's already gone up by over 2 tenths of a second going into S2. Fresh off the jump boost, Alex hits the next turn with a quick mini turbo before heading into another wide turn to collect 3 coins and the super mini turbo, all before hitting the first of 2 jump boosts heading into the second zipper ramp. Alberto also grabs the jump boost and mini turbo around the first turn. He'll also grab the same 3 coins with a super mini turbo, but he quickly chains 2 normal mini turbos right after that and before the zipper ramp. That's a very tight window to squeeze in 2 more mini turbos like that, but this is Alberto so it shouldn't be a surprise that he pulled it off. That spectacular mobility allowed him to build on his lead as he sits a full 6 tenths of a second going into the extra long S3. 
So after Alex hits the jump boost, he grabs a quick mini turbo, then jump boost at the start of the waves. He then starts drifting right again and grabs another mini turbo jump boost combo before taking the shortcut drifting off this zipper ramp. Once he lands, he finishes charging the super mini turbo and rides it out onto this other shortcut. There he'll hit two more jump boosts and glide across the ravine to the other side. Once there, he starts to drift around the final turn and uses his final mushroom to cut through the off-road on his way to the finish line. Alberto also hits the jump boost and quick mini turbo around the first turn. He'll drift into the shortcut but hit a jump boost off the zipper ramp. When he lands, he'll grab a quick mini turbo jump boost combo onto the first ramp of the second shortcut and quickly chain another one of those combos off that ramp and onto the glider where he'll glide across and into that same final turn shortcut after using his first mushroom. That last part was absolutely insane to comprehend, but we'll break it down on lap 2. After a lap of super precise driving and more mini turbos, Alberto has grown his lead to well over 1.4 seconds. Alex starts off S1 on lap 2 the same way as before, but when he hits that second turn, he stays closer to the inside since there aren't any coins to collect. The mini turbo arrangement he gets is identical to lap 1 as well. Alberto also follows his lap 1 approach and stays closer to the inside of each turn on his way to the first zipper ramp. Nothing much has changed, but his lead has jumped up to 1.6 seconds at the end of this very short S1. Through S2, both racers hit their jump boost and drift around the first and second turn with their mini and super mini turbos. Alex heads straight for the ramp, but Alberto again chains two quick mini turbos before the ramp. As a result, he's gone up by well over 2.2 seconds at the end of S2. Through S3, Alex navigates the waves very carefully so that he doesn't mess up the drifts and jump boost he performs in this section. One small slip up can quite literally derail your focus. Here we see him cautiously hit jump boost and quick mini turbos through both of the shortcuts and onto the glider ramp. Once he reaches the other side, it's a much easier right drift and mushroom cut to close out the lap. Now let's dig into Alberto's S3. For the first half, it looks similar to Alex's. Mini turbo, jump boost, and a very careful turn into the first shortcut. Where he differs on this lap is he drifts off that zipper ramp and lands for the super mini turbo. From there, he hits the jump boost and instantly charges up the quick mini turbo before yet another jump boost off the second shortcut ramp and another off the glider ramp. That little 3-ish seconds of driving is probably the most difficult thing I've ever tried to do. There's so many variables that affect whether or not you'd be able to pull it off, but Alberto clearly has it down to a science. After landing on the other side and grabbing his second mushroom cut around the final turn, Alberto's lead has jumped up to just a hair under 3 seconds after outsplitting Alex by over 1.4 seconds at the end of lap 2. Lap 3 is pretty similar, so here it is at a glance. Both racers round the first few turns with the same mini turbos, plus one more if you're Alberto, before catching the zipper ramp into S2. After they make their way around the first few turns, Alex heads right for the ramp while Alberto once again chains two mini turbos before heading into S3. Even at a glance there's so much going on here, but in the simplest possible terms, both racers execute their strat of well-timed mini turbos and jump boosts as they make their way through two shortcuts before eventually landing on the glider ramp and flying through to the other side. One last mushroom cut around the last turn will do it for both racers as Alberto comes flying across the finish line, posting a time that ended up being over 4.7 seconds faster than Alex's former world record. So by grabbing more longer lasting mini turbos, taking better lines, and pulling off one of the most difficult maneuvers in the game, Alberto was able to redefine what the fastest time in the world is on this track. It looks to be extremely optimized thanks to him, and I wish I could have him break it down a little bit, but we couldn't make that happen this time, so on to the best known splits. The best known splits for this run ironically make the record seem pretty slow. Japanese player Ronnie and Alberto each hold a stake in the best known some time. Alberto's world record laps 1 and 2 are more than a tenth of a second off from the best known split, meaning there's ample room for improvement there. His world record lap 3, however, is only a few frames away from the best known lap, so that one is about as perfect as, as it's going to get for now. Now, as good as Alberto is, he hasn't recorded a lap from a flat start that's as fast as Ronnie, but he was able to string together 3 very difficult laps on record pace, so it's likely any further improvement will still come from him. The worldwide top 10 consists of only 4 national and 3 continental record holders. Alberto sits at the top, nearly 2 tenths back is Ronnie, and in 3rd place with the only other 145 in existence is Japanese player Tights. 4th and 5th place belong to Yoshi and Army, who are just a hair over half a tenth apart, and the bottom 5 of this leaderboard share less than a tenth of a second in separation. That group consists of a few Japanese players such as Lemon, Kuato, 
Amond, and Scary, with the Australian record holder Panda in the mix at 9th. It's obviously going to take a 145 to break this world record, and so far only 3 players in the world have done it, but if anyone is going to break it, it's more than likely going to be Alberto because of the insane level of difficulty on this course presents. Only a player as well rounded as he can pull something like this off. Or maybe Ronnie is hiding somewhere in the shadows vying for that top spot once again. Who knows? And that's the end of episode 51 and the first episode of season 6. Thank you for watching and being so patient with me. In an ideal world, I would be uploading these videos every day, but when life comes at you, sometimes a break is just what you need. I've enjoyed that break, but I'm back now and ready to crank out these videos again. As always, if you enjoyed this video, like and share with your friends and comment on which season 2 course you'd like me to flip the CC and take a look at next. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.